All right, y'all, welcome back to the channel. I'm Texas Dad, and this is my son, Matt, and we are going to do another watch along video. Uh, if you haven't, check down below, subscribe to our backup channel, Texas Boys React. Also, subscribe to our Rumble and Odyssey channel. You'll see the links down below. Also, if you want these videos ad-free, you can go sign up and become a native, and you get all of our new videos ad-free also, you get exclusive discounts on all of our products that are over on thetexasboys.com. And on top of all that, I know it's a lot, you get all of our family's recipes. Wait, there's more. <laughs> all right, y'all, so uh, welcome back. Um, before the thought police shoved us down the memory hole for a week for a timeout, um, I did a video, a, a financial video about the markets and how synthetic they are and um, just talked a little bit about my experience and different things that I've seen. And so today I wanted to review um, some really great information by a really, a really sound guy that's been doing an incredible amount of work. His name's John Titus and he does have a Substack. I will link his Substack down below. And every time we say we're gonna do that and don't do it, people remind me and then I always take care of that. So I'm gonna every link. Time. John Titus's uh, Substack down below. He has a YouTube channel called Best Evidence, and he's been doing some really great work on what the Federal Reserve has been up to, and he has made many predictions that have come true, hmm. and uh, really smart guy, smart money guy, a lot smarter than me, obviously, but I really wanted to take a look at this video. We're going to kind of scrub through it. We'll link the video in full down below so you can watch it at your leisure but uh, just wanted to cover the happy high points and interject some commentary. So let's get started. Well, 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 well. What do we have here? Huh. It's a Fed research paper from June of this year admitting that QE, quantitative easing, increased bank deposits during the pandemic because the Federal Reserve was buying assets from non-banks, which is exactly what this channel and only this channel has been telling you for the last 20 months. Welcome to Best Evidence. My name is John Titus. And in this episode, we are going to review the mechanics of pandemic QE as explained by this channel multiple times Bees are dying. Cows are starving. Crops are drying up. Local farmers are shutting down everywhere. So what can you do and how can you help? By shopping at thetexasboys.com, you're supporting local bee farmers, organic coffee roasters, and small businesses. So shop now at thetexasboys.com. So what is the Fed? So the Federal Reserve is a group of private banks and uh, it was established in under the Woodrow Wilson administration in 1913. Uh, G. Edward Griffin wrote a great book at, uh, on it called The Creature from Jekyll Island. So if you're unfamiliar with what the Federal Reserve is, I highly recommend G. Edward Griffin's book, The Creature from Jekyll Island. Um, but basically, the Federal Reserve is neither federal nor is it reserved. It's a hmm. private banking cartel. Um, the Constitution gave all, the United States of America the legal right to print and mint its own money. Uh, the Fed, we then gave that right to this private banking cartel called the Federal Reserve, and hmm. now they print our money for us and charge us interest. Hmm. Isn't that nice of them? And we are the surf class that pays that interest and our great, 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 great grandchildren that'll never be able to pay that interest. And basically the Federal Reserve is the reason that the dollar will, will crash and they'll attempt to replace it with uh, central bank digital currency. So hmm. that's okay. what the Fed is. And isn't it cute how just like everything else, that they do, it's called the Federal Reserve, and it is neither Federal Reserve. Mm. Think Patriot Act. Once again, they say the opposite mm. of actually what it is. 
So that's called sophistry. Shocker. That's called wordsmithery. Mm -hmm. That's called 1984. That's called newspeak. So if you haven't read my t-shirt, please. <laughs> All right. And now is officially ratified by the Federal Reserve itself. Briefly put, QE during the pandemic increased bank deposits contrary to what countless professional financial gurus told you. So after we review the correct understanding of pandemic QE, we will look at the implications of the Fed causing bank deposits to increase because it reveals a lot about the Fed as it now lobbies for ever more control of the monetary system through CBDC. I try to make videos that are self-contained and this video will be- So what I wanna do, we're gonna link this video below. Mm -hmm. You can watch it in its entirety. I wanna scrub forward to where we get to the meat and potatoes of the numbers. Yeah. Um, and you'll kind of see why once we get there. And this is for people that are maybe my age, maybe a little bit younger, people that remember the housing crisis of 2008 and all the different things that happened with these mortgage-backed securities and all these foreclosures. And the reason why we need to talk about this and think about it and look at, at it is because within the next 24 months, this will absolutely happen again on a much larger scale. And this is probably gonna coincide with a central bank digital currency and basically commerce as we understand it. So let's scrub forward. When I found the Federal Reserve Research Note explaining that bank deposits increased during the pandemic because the Fed had bought assets from non-banks. Here is the paper. Um, as you can see, it is dated June 3rd, uh, 20. Now for reference, when he says non-banks, think venture capital, think BlackRock, think uh, investment institutions, and you will see, and he's gonna explain how nefarious this is. Hmm. Um, and for those of you that are paying attention, you're gonna be like, wait a minute, uh, those venture capital and investment companies have been buying up land and farmland and different things. And so now you're gonna understand where the money came from and who's paying the interest on it. Uh, 2022, let me zoom in on that real quick. Um, and it is titled, uh, Understanding Bank Deposit Growth During the COVID-19 Pandemic. And you can see here in this first figure, total to bank deposits of US commercial banks. Um, and that's really the central uh, point of this paper, is like what happened here? And you can see the graph they've got here. They're really wondering what happened here uh, with this spike in, in bank deposits. You zoom in a little bit. And so what you can see is that this trend line here. So what do they, what does he mean by like a bank deposit by, what is that? He's, so the Federal Reserve is supposedly responsible for infusing money into the market. Okay. And here, uh, in order for them to give money mm -hmm. to a non-bank entity, there has to be an account for it to go to when they create this digital, when they, to, to force it into the market. Okay. So what they have to do is they have to create bank accounts to put this money into for BlackRock and huh. fill in the ne'er-do-well, whatever, the top one percenters. Uh -huh. um, so that's why we're seeing an increase in bank deposits uh, during this uh, QE okay. in quarter four. Uh, bank deposits, you know, it's totally, it's totally out of whack during the pandemic. This is the pandemic here. This is the global financial crisis here. Anyway, that's what the paper is really getting at, is what caused that spike in bank deposits. Now, remember from the clip I showed you earlier from quantitative easing is the biggest sham ever. New bank deposits get created whenever the Fed buys assets from non-banks. So now what we wanna do is we wanna see what this Fed paper says on that issue. Like where is that spike coming from? And you can see, we're just gonna have to scroll down here. Um, and here we go. Uh, yeah, here it is. This is the section we wanna talk about, the roles of credit line draws and the Federal Reserve's asset purchases. It's really the asset purchases that are driving the increase. Let's zoom in. Here we go. 
the asset purchases by the Federal Reserve led to the creation of reserves in the banking system. That part of the sentence doesn't really tell us that much because the Fed always creates new reserves when it buys assets. Regardless of whether it's buying from a bank or a non-bank, the Fed is creating reserves. That's, that's just how it is done. That's how asset purchases are made, regardless of the source of those, those assets that the Fed's buying. But the sentence goes on to tell us what happens when those new reserves buy an asset from a non-bank. Specifically, it tells us to the extent that the Federal Reserve purchased the assets from non-bank entities, they also led to the creation of deposits. And there you have it. You've got buying from a non-bank entity gives you... And people say all this stuff, oh, they don't create money out of thin air. Well, <laughs> that's creating money out of thin air. They're literally creating bank accounts and fusing money into it. And obviously people can access those funds. That's the whole entire point. To me, it sounds like a very bad Monopoly game. And like, you're the guy at the, you're the guy at the end of the game, right? And you got all the rest of your players. You got them all beat down. You got them into all the debt. At least how I play Monopoly anyway. I get everybody paying me like portions. I don't let them just cash out. Yeah, go bankrupt. So um, it just sounds like a really bad Monopoly game. And you got the big dog on top. And he pretty much can do whatever the heck he wants. Because he has the money. And that's all it sounds like right now is a big old bad Monopoly game. So what is quantitative easing? Okay, I'm gonna give you the textbook definition. Let's see what Wikipedia says. Wicka wicka. So the dictionary says, the introduction of new money into the money supply by the central bank. Now, hmm. Wikipedia says, Wicked. Quantitative easing is a monetary policy whereby a central bank purchases predetermined amounts of government bonds or other financial assets in order to inject money into the economy to expand economic activity. So as you can clearly see from both of these definitions, none of this activity is prescribed to non-bank uh, entities. That's the whole entire, because, it's, because that is by definition wealth transfer. And not only that, it's a private banking cartel that legally and constitutionally doesn't even have the right to print our money, then prints our money and literally gives it to the top 1% mm. in uh, fabricated bank accounts at which they can spend at their leisure. They then there turn around and gobble up more assets, more land, more private property, all at 0% interest. And they didn't even work for the money. They didn't even steal the money from anybody. The Fed gave them the money. They just made it. <laughs> because it's a good old boys network and yeah. it's the just us system and we're not in it. And mm. if this isn't telling you that everything that these different entities and agencies, it's, it's, an, it's a network. And these mm. same people are involved in all the other nefarious, terrible things. And it's organized crime. And that's who these people are. And this is what they do. And they write about it. And they put it on their website. And they tell you that they're doing it. But most people are just trying to pay the bills and put food on the table. So they don't have the time to look into this stuff. Gives you newly created deposits. So the Fed is telling you exactly uh, what I told you in these three videos but just to firm up the point, let's scroll on down to see exactly uh, how that takes place because the Fed explains this in the appendix of the paper. Um, and so let's look at how the Fed describes the mechanics of an asset purchase from a non-bank. Um, and here we go. When the Federal Reserve purchases securities from a non-bank seller, so that's the exact scenario I've been talking about in these videos, it creates new bank deposits. And there you go. I want to pause it right there because these are very key words here. The Fed is actually going a step further than I've gone. I've been saying the Fed causes new bank deposits to be created. <laughs> they buys assets for non-banks. The Fed, Fed paper right here, you, you can see it. Like, yeah, we make them. Comes right it out and says it. it, meaning the Fed purchases of assets from a non-bank, it 
creates new bank deposits. Uh, that's very, very direct language there by the Fed. Remember those five words because they're really the most important five words the Fed's written since 2008. And those five words, by the way, annihilate every one of the Gomer pile gurus telling you, oh, no, QE can't get into the banking system. Uh, yes, it can. The Fed says so right here. Uh, feast your lying eyes it's on this It's a gigantic bubble, y'all. Mm -hmm. It creates new bank deposits. That means the Fed buying assets from non-banks. So don't tell me it doesn't affect bank deposits because the Fed says, the Fed disagrees, and it agrees with me, best evidence, saying, yep, it creates bank deposits. But let's go on. Let's see exactly how um, the Fed creates bank deposits. And the way it works is creates deposits by crediting the reserve account of the depository institution at which the non-bank seller has an account. Okay, so the depository institution means the Fed is crediting the reserve account of the bank at which the non-bank seller has an account. That's how it works. I've explained this multiple times in these videos. Let's continue. And then the depository institution, the bank, credits the deposit account of the non-bank seller. So the bank has these new reserves that came from the Federal Reserve as the buyer on the asset side. And now it is counterbalancing those reserves by issuing new bank deposits on the liability side of the bank's balance sheet. And that's what I've been telling you since December of 2020 in these videos. And now, 18 months later, the Federal Reserve says, you know what, that YouTube leper, uh, best evidence was right all along. You know, really, if you think about it, that's YouTube for you, where the truth is treated like leprosy. But you may be saying to yourself, well, okay, so what? Bank deposits increased during the pandemic, big deal. Why should I care about that? You should care about that because of where those additional deposits showed up. It reveals a lot about the Fed's true remit, its true purpose. You might think that when the Fed bought those assets from non-banks, it was from non-bank financial institutions like BlackRock. And that's where the $4 trillion in new deposits is sitting. In, in other words, sitting, it would be sitting, you might think, in institutional bank accounts. And that's true to a very significant degree. And that's why the stock market went up. Those institutional investors, you know, they dumped their treasuries, dumped their mortgage back securities. They turned around and put it into stock market and put it into SPACs. But a huge chunk of money, a huge chunk of those deposits went into individual deposit accounts. And that's what you need to understand. Um, it may be tempting to think that new bank deposits are sitting with the bottom 50% or really the bottom 90% of individual accounts due to the federal government's pandemic stimulus programs. But that's actually, actually not the case at all, as we're about to see. And I want to start here by looking at uh, a graph from the Fed's FRED website. As some of my readers, my viewers have told me, it's Federal Reserve Economic Data is what that stands for. Um, I want to look at this graph of deposit accounts and I'm going to blow it up here in a minute, but you can see here the title. I want you to look at the title, Deposits of All Commercial Bank Accounts. I'm going to blow this up. The title gets a lot smaller. I want you to notice that. So I'm going to, he's going to work through the chart. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take it to the end of the chart so you can kind of see the end conclusion. And then we can, we can comment on it. And this, this is for the people that aren't into the numbers and yeah. aren't as nerdy. And Which is fine. Six trillion dollars up to $1,502.8 trillion, a gain of uh, $1,096.8 billion. Um, that's over over a trillion dollar gain there. And now finally, let's look at the um, top 1%. This is the 99th to 100th wealth percentile. Their checkable the deposits before the pandemic were sitting at $220.2 billion. And then after the Fed, well, really by January of 2022, their checkable deposits in the top 1% were $1,331 billion, a gain of $1,110.8 billion. So the top 1% of the households, in other words, got 35% of the new deposits from quantitative easing. It was very, very skewed. Just from quantitative easing. Now, it is very easy. Uh, we know, you can look this up, there are 123.6 million households in the U.S., so if we go back, we can figure out how much the average household 
in each wealth band got during got from quantitative easing by the Fed during the pandemic. Um, and for the bottom 50, I'll just run through the numbers here. Um, the 123.6 million households means that the bottom 50 percent by definition has 61.8 million households. And so if you divide this out, you remember the gain was $167.2 billion divided by 61.8 million households gives you $2,700 of extra deposit money sitting in the average household account. The top 9% you know, from 90 to 99, the average household there saw an extra $98,600 from the Fed's QE program uh, during the pandemic. And finally, the top 1%, uh, their average household saw an increase, an extra $898,700 in their checking accounts uh, as a result of the Fed's quantitative easing um, during the pandemic. But these are staggering numbers that you're looking at here of extra check checking account money in household accounts. These are household numbers, keep in mind, and they're staggering. So you might naturally be asking yourself, you know, why did the Fed do this again? Well, let's just go to the Fed's website um, when the pandemic got rolled out to see what the Fed said it in some words. And here you can see the Fed announces extensive new measures to support the economy. This is a press release from March 23rd, 2020. And let's just see what the Fed said um, about what it was doing. Supposedly, this was done. The Fed rolled out all these quantitative easing. It was to support households, businesses, and the U.S. economy. Okay, well, they left out the part about helping the top 1%, but okay. You know, it's funny because during the global financial crisis, the Fed said, well, we can't help underwater homeowners. And really, our programs now are just helping banks and financial institutions. And the Fed saved those banks. The Fed saved those banks from bankruptcy. It, it gave them trillions of dollars of money in quantitative easing. Yep. And then Just those banks, if you recall, not, not turned around tough. and fabricated false evidence to foreclose on those homeowners. It ginned up fake evidence and went into the court. It perpetrated fraud on the court these banks did. Um, you might remember Linda Green, that name from a 60 Minutes episode. It was from um, April of 2011. You know, People's homes were stolen because those bailed out banks. Those banks got bailed out by the Fed. Those bailed out banks ginned up fake evidence. I'll need to get out of debt and at least not have a mortgage. I mm. realize you're going to have to pay property taxes. Yeah. But you, you all better get out of debt. Fake evidence. And they stole people's homes. And it was no problem for the Fed to help those criminal banks. In that entire time, the, Fed's, the Fed was saying, oh, no, can't help individuals. Can't help individual homeowners. They're on their own. And now in the wake of the pandemic, we learned the truth. It is possible for the Fed to directly help households. You just saw the graphs. It doesn't just, it, the help is not limited to just banks and financial institutions. In other words, those people's homes were stolen because the Federal Reserve decided not to help them. And it lied and said, oh no, we can only help banks. The reality is the Fed could help individuals. It could have helped them all along. It could have helped them anytime it wanted to. The Fed simply elected not to do so back in the global financial crisis for people whose homes were being stolen by the Fed's owners, the banks. Remember, the banks own the Fed. So the Fed bailed out its owners and said, oh, now it can't help on owners. And now you're starting to see the reality. The Fed can bail out whoever it wants to. Um, at this point, even if you can't see the Fed as the instrumentality of rich criminals that it is, you at least have to be asking yourself whether it's really a good idea to let the Fed control via central bank digital currency, the financial lives of the same people that help bank rob in order to enrich the Fed's owners. And that's just a starter. That's just an opening salvo in the way of questions. I'm going to come back to this paper. Uh, the privately owned Federal Reserve has no business running the monetary system. And it is privately owned. If you doubt me, I have another video called The Fed Kicking People When They're Down. Proves it in the Fed's own words. The Fed's privately owned. And you can see right here what it's been doing. Um, but that's it for this video. I want to get back to murder of a rebel nation. Uh, get, get so what is the, when he says the Fed is privately owned, what does he mean by that? So the, 
the Federal Reserve is ran by the banks. Okay. So it's a gotcha. private entity. There's nothing federal about it, and mm. there's no reserves about it. So it's pro the the banking cartel got together at Jekyll Island. They said, "This is what we're going to do. This is how we're going to do it." And then somehow they talked good old Woody Wilson into signing into law, and Woodrow Wilson later uh, greatly lamented the fact that he passed the law and uh, allowed the Federal Reserve to come into being. And it's never been, you know, Ron Paul tried, tried his hardest <laughs> to create awareness and to at least audit the Fed, but none of that happens. <sighs> now you see what the Fed's doing now, and it'll sweep right into uh, central bank digital currency and that whole concept of central bank, it's talking about the Fed, central mm, banks. Gotcha. Yep, so that's what the central banks are. Any other questions? No. I. This was the first time ever hearing about this guy, and I never heard about any of the all this crazy stuff about the QE and everything that's happening. We've been quantitative easing for a decade or two now uh -huh. and you know we it wasn't even a thing on the books it wasn't a thing in broad daylight uh -huh. uh, it's always been a thing these are the type of actions and the trillions and trillions and trillions these are these are not even the trillions that we know about or that anybody in the general public or mm -hmm. general population knows about these are all extra trillions on top of those trillions yeah. so you wonder where all these nefarious people and where the military industrial complex mm -hmm. And where all this money comes from, well, it comes from the Federal Reserve and yep. different little cute maneuvers like this. I mean, this is QE whatever. They, they used to number them. Like, this is QE4, this is QE5, this is QE8. It's like QE infinity right now. Yeah. So, um, well, I hope this, like, uh, stimulates your brain cells and is kind of, like, reinforcing <laughs> the fact of what is coming, the financial Ooh, tsunami man. that is coming and the guys like Robert Kiyosaki and other financial experts warn about and not like these these goofy goofballs like Jim Cramer that get paid to like uh, pimp ticker symbols on CNN and stuff. Um, this is like the real meat and potatoes of artificial, and this is completely synthetic, artificial, and fabricated out of thin air. This is nothing, and the, this is absolute wealth redistribution and this is taking from this the uh, poor and the middle mm. class and redistributing it to the top one percent in broad daylight and they mm. even type, write it out and put it on their website so they are this is wealth transfer this is communism this is socialism this is not capitalism okay no. this is robbery in broad daylight and this is criminal and that, that's why there's a district of criminals and they all got their distribution in this. And then the Black Rocks and all the other ne'er-do-wells and the Gates and the Bezos and all those, everybody got paid except us, y'all. Mm -hmm. So uh, just something to think about. So think about that. Get out of debt, pay off your mortgage. Um, don't let them steal your house. No. All right? At least not by de facto. Yeah. They might still come and take your house, but don't let them do it by de facto. Yeah with a mortgage. All right, y'all, I hope you enjoyed this video. Let us know what you think down below. Uh, leave us a comment. If you wanna leave it here on ThemTube or if you wanna leave it over on Rumble, that would be great. Let's talk over on Rumble. Rumble's uh, knocking off the rust and yeah. figuring all their stuff out and making their interfaces easier and better. So we will see y'all in the next video. All right, bye-bye.